In this video, we will build a complete inventory management system and an inventory dashboard by using Google Sheets, Apps Script and Chat GPT. This video is a continuation of a previous video. So please watch part 1 if you want to understand the overall background. The link is provided in the description of this video. With that being said, let's get started. So in part 1 of this tutorial, we completed building the basic modules of our inventory management system, including the inventory, suppliers and customers module. Now we will build the remaining parts of our inventory application as well as the inventory dashboard. First of all, we will focus on designing the purchases and sales modules. These two modules are the most important components of our inventory management application because they will interact with the customers, suppliers and inventory modules to automatically update the data as soon as we create a new purchase or a sales order. So let's go to our prompts document and copy prompt number 5. I will share all of these prompts in the video's description. After copying the prompt, go to ChatGPT and paste the prompt. Don't forget to turn on this reason option because it will help you generate better results. Then send the prompt and wait for a few moments until ChatGPT generates the complete response. Alright, so ChatGPT has generated two code files that we need to add to our Google Sheets Apps Script project. I will first copy the HTML code. Open my Apps Script project and click this plus icon to create a new HTML file. Name this file as purchases. Then paste the code copied from chat GPT. And if you are not familiar with Google Sheets Apps Script, then I strongly suggest you to watch part 1 of this video. So let's go back to chat GPT again. And scroll down to find the second piece of code. The name of this file is gspurchases.gs. Let's copy this code, switch back to the Apps Script project, click the plus sign again and create a new script file. Name this file as gspurchases exactly as suggested by chat GPT and paste the code here. Then click here to save and update the project. Now let's go back to our inventory management app and click purchases from the sidebar menu to navigate to the purchases page. So the purchases page is designed with some menu buttons on the top and a search functionality on the right side. Now let's start testing the functions one by one. First of all, I will click this new PO button to create a new purchase order which will open a pop-up form with two sections. In the first section, we will enter the general details of our purchase order. Click here to generate a unique ID for this purchase order. Then select the date. And once you click the supplier name drop-down, the system will automatically pick the list of suppliers from the suppliers module. After choosing the supplier, other details like supplier ID, state and city will also be filled automatically. Finally, I will enter the bill number to complete this section. In the second section, we will add items to this purchase order. Click the add item button to create a new purchase order line. And you can see that the system has created a row and automatically filled the purchase order ID date, supplier name and other information from the first section. Now I will click the item name drop down and select the item that I am buying. Note that after selecting the item name, the system has automatically filled in the item ID, item type, category and subcategory from the inventory module. Now we can fill in the quantity and cost details. However, these fields are so small that we cannot see the data. But let's try to add the quantities and the unit cost to check if the calculations are working correctly. So you can see that the calculation logic is working fine. Let's click the add item button one more time. 
and a new purchase order line is created successfully. This is very practical because in a real world scenario, a single purchase order can contain multiple items. Now let's go to ChatGPT and increase the width of these columns so we can properly see the data. I will type in the changes I want. For example, increase the column widths so that the purchase order form covers the entire page. And ChatGPT will provide the updated codes. Now let's incorporate these updated codes in our apps script project. Switch back to the inventory management system. Close the form and refresh the purchases page again. Now let's click the new PO button again to add a new purchase order. And you can see that the width of our purchase order form is increased. Let's quickly generate the PO ID, select the date, enter supplier's detail and add the bill number. Then click add item button. And now the column width problem is resolved and we can properly see the data. I will choose the item, enter the quantity, the unit cost and the tax rate. Let's also add one more item to this purchase order. And finally, click the save PO button. So we got a notification that a new purchase order is created and saved successfully. In the purchase orders list, you can see that the purchase order is saved as a single line item. And the total amount is automatically calculated. I will click this view button to see the breakdown of the purchase order. Here we have this edit button in case we want to make changes to this purchase order. And we also have this delete icon if we want to remove any item from the purchase order. Alright, now we also need to verify that the inventory quantities and the supplier balances are also updated correctly. So let's go to the suppliers page. And you can see that the total purchase order amount is correctly added against the same supplier. Plus the balance payable is also updated automatically. Now let's go to the inventory page and verify if the quantities are also updated correctly. And we can verify here that the purchase quantities are correctly added to the right column. And the remaining stock quantities are also updated successfully. Alright, now that the purchases module is working correctly, let's go ahead and start building the sales module. And since the sales module is the exact opposite of the purchases module, so I will use a trick here to quickly build the sales module. Let's go back to the prompts page. Copy prompt number 6. Paste the prompt in chat GPT. And in addition to the prompt, I will also attach the codes from my purchases module. ChatGPT will use these codes as a reference which will help us quickly design the sales module. Remaining steps are same, so I will fast forward this process. Alright, so I have updated the codes for sales module in my apps script project. Now let's switch to our inventory application. Click sales from the sidebar menu to go to the sales module. Then click new SO button to create a new sales order. And this sales order form is almost the same as we have already built for the purchase order. We already know how it works. So let's quickly start adding the details for this sales order. Don't worry about the design because we can always change this later on. Right now we will only focus on the logic and make sure that the calculations are working correctly. So I have completed the first section of the sales order. Now we will add a couple of items in this sales order just like we did for the purchase order. After filling in the details, click save button to create a sales order. 
All right, so the sales order is created and saved successfully. But this HTML table is also retrieving the blank rows from our Google Sheet. But no problem, we will fix this later on. Right now, we can confirm that the total sales order amount is saved correctly against the same customer. Click the view button to see the breakdown of the sales order. And just like the purchase order, we also have the edit and delete functions here. Now let's go to the customer's page and check if the balances are updated correctly. And here you can see that the sales order amount is successfully added against the same customer and the balance receivable is also updated. Finally, I will check the inventory page to make sure that the stock quantities are reduced. And there you go. The sold stock quantities are correctly saved in the right column and the remaining stock quantities are also updated. Alright, now that both the purchases and sales module are working, let's move forward and start building the receipts and payments module. These will be the last two components of our inventory management system, after which we will build the inventory dashboard. I will go back to the prompts document and copy prompt number 7 to design the receipts module. I will fast forward the process because you already know the steps. Alright, so the receipts module is ready. We got few errors but those are already fixed. Now let me show you how to use this module. Click the new receipt button to record money received from customer against the sales order. Choose the transaction date, generate a transaction ID and select customer name from the drop down. Other customer details will be automatically filled just like we saw in the purchases and sales module. But here is a new thing. After choosing the customer name, the system will automatically populate the list of sales order for that customer. If I change the name of customer, you will see that no sales order are found because we have not created any sales order for this customer. And once you select the sales order ID, the system will automatically retrieve the balance receivable against that sales order. Choose the invoice number and the payment method. Finally, we will enter the amount received from the customer. But here is another cool thing. The receivable balance against the sales order is $12,900. But let me enter $13,000 in the amount received field. And watch, when I click the save button, the system will throw an error because the received amount is greater than the receivable amount for that sales order. So I will reduce the amount to $10,000. Then click the save button again. And now the receipt is saved successfully. You can click this edit button to make the changes you want. Now let's go to the customer's page and verify if the balance receivable from this customer is also reduced. And you can see that the money received is correctly applied to the same customer. Plus the balance receivable is also updated automatically. Let's go to the sales page and we can confirm that the same amount is also applied correctly against the sales order. So both the sales order balance and the total balance receivable from the customer are updated. Alright, now let's finally build the payments module which is the exact opposite of the receipts module. And we can again use the codes of the receipts module as a reference to build our payments module. I am going to skip that part because the process is same. But let me quickly show you how to use this module. Click the payments page and then click new payment button. Select the payment date, generate transaction ID, choose the supplier, select the purchase order against which you are making the payment 
enter the payment amount and click save. So the payment we just created is successfully added to the payments list. Let's go to the suppliers page and see that the payment of $15,000 is now appearing in the payments column. Plus the balance payable to the supplier is also updated automatically. Now go to the purchases page and you can see that the same amount is also applied against the correct purchase order and the PO balance is also updated correctly. Alright, so we almost completed building our inventory management system and we also tested that everything is working correctly. Now let's go to the final step and start building the inventory dashboard. So I will go back to the prompts and copy the last prompt. Paste the prompt in ChatGPT and wait for ChatGPT to generate the codes. Then paste the codes provided by ChatGPT in the main index file. Click here to save and update the project. Go back to the inventory management system and click the dashboard page. So the basic dashboard structure is built and the charts are created. But if I scroll down, you can see that some of the charts are not populating correctly. But we will improve this step by step. Let's go back to ChatGPT and type in the required changes. Get updated codes provided by ChatGPT and replace in the apps script project. So after prompting ChatGPT around 5 to 6 times, this is the final version of the inventory dashboard that I was able to prepare. You can see the top sales location, top selling item, top 10 customers, the cities where I am making the highest sales and the distribution of sales and purchases by category and location. And so on, you can go ahead and continue to customize this system according to your requirements. You can download this inventory management system and the inventory dashboard for free by using the Google Drive link in the description of this video. Feel free to drop a comment and let me know if you have any questions. Also check out this excel dashboard video on my channel and subscribe AIC certified accountants for more tutorials like this.